these custom fields. I just stop here and I created my first custom fields. I go back to the billing codes and as you see I've already created three ambulance, golf and park. Let's say for the golf fees if I'm going to add a custom field now if you recall originally it was empty. When I add this now is weekend has happened to be available here and since I've chosen is boolean is actually giving me yes or no feature. If I add this now I can actually add an additional feature here. Say if it is required that means without answering that question I can let you use this billing code or if it is not required you can specify literally the information in regard to the available rate and deal with it. So as you see this is a fixed rate however if you have a custom field you have the capability to use the rate script and as part of the rate script you can use the advanced editing in order to manipulate and test your code or you can just type a very simple code in there and use this variable within the C-sharp code or VB code in there depending on your program and programming language preferences. And then as you see there is a compile button that automatically compiles your code into the common intermediate language which I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to elaborate more on it and you're going to see lots of examples. You're just creating a building block. At this time, I just want to close it. So once more, the custom field is available. And now if I go back under the billing code references, you see that it's tied in to that billing code. One of the things that you notice, one billing code can have multiple custom fields and one custom field could be mapped to multiple billing codes. So it's a many-to-many -many relationship right there. Now if I carry forward, the next option is a billing classification. That's actually where you put everything into perspective. So you link the billing codes with the billing code custom fields, but on the billing classification, you're grouping those codes together. And when I click new and I specify a billing classification such as this, parks, and recreation invoices. Later I come back into this in regard to the accounts payable and receivable setup. You may want to apply a terms of payment if you're dealing with the corporate customers. Maybe a company goes to a park and they have a group employee visit to that park. They don't want to pay per person. They just say invoice me and I'll pay you later. So you may want to have a terms of payment. Like at the time I invoice you, you have like 30 days to pay me. Or you could specify interest code to say if you don't pay me on time, how much interest is that going to be applied? And you can calculate that and use it. It's similar to the cash discount, but it's the opposite way. You don't offer discount, you collect more interest. Needless to say, you could also consider usage of the interest code from a posting profile or from billing classification. It's completely up to you. In regard to generation of an invoice number, you have the capability to specify a particular number sequence. If you recall, at the beginning of our discussion, when you created a legal entity, you click on a generate button in order to create all existing and important references to have their own number sequences. However, when it comes to journals, which I'm going to show you how to create those journals shortly as part of an accounts payable and receivable, you actually have to create these journals and assign number sequences manually to them. Either you can use an existing number sequence or you can create your own. Credit note is for refund, like when you want to pay a customer an additional fee. You could also restrict the